David Jordan. <laughs> here I am over here. Uh, and what was your name again? Tom Lackey. Tom Lackey with the uh, Lake County uh, Tax Collector's Office, and we're going to talk about the PACE program uh, for financing of construction, uh, and we're going to talk about the commercial financing program for PACE first. Uh, so maybe because I know you followed it all the way through when PACE first started. Yes. Maybe you could give kind of background on how how it happened and and then we'll get into the issues that you see. Um, I'm trying to some degree of brevity for the benefit sure. of the viewers, but it's because I'll probably try and put together a written one that's more okay. complete. My first time it came on my radar was and I didn't realize it was in around 2007 when my predecessor, Bob McKee, was on the Budget Tax Reform Commission. And the late Senator Margolis had uh, made a motion to have a constitutional amendment for folks to vote on that would provide the property appraiser an opportunity to not add value if you improved your home by storm hardening or by any kind of energy efficiency type thing. A state or federal senator? She was a state. state. A long oh, so started. She's, she's a long She's okay. from Miami Beach area. She's, okay. And she was, she's not of the prevailing party. Um, okay. And she, so what happened is came up and it made sense on its face value. It's like we just had gone, remember this is 07, 04 was the three hurricanes that yeah. cost us. So it made sense not to be hammering people for hardening their houses so they don't blow away. So that got on about, well, what, what was sitting in the distance was something that was a Clinton child from way back, probably not a good term to use together, um, <laughs> that something about some green stuff and something they cranked up down at the back before 07 on kind of a national, federal level. So what happened, this got on the ballot, we all voted for it because it made sense, and it passed. Well, right after that, there were statutes put in place to execute it. Well, okay, can we back up to the state one that got on the ballot and passed? What exactly was the effect of that? The effect of that on its face value was that if you put in extra hurricane straps on your trusses, you put new windows in, and then you pull the permit, Mr. Baker isn't gonna hammer you with an added value, like if you added on uh, room to the back of your house and made it bigger. Okay, so, so basically was it was of, if you spent money in your home, it wouldn't be added to the valuation. For tax for, And they were, I presume, a, a, a standard list of services or construction that were covered by that that right. would be excluded, like hardening or what, new windows? And, harder, and it, it had the energy <coughs> thing in there. But yeah. if, it, if it was solar or you did these other things, yeah. you wouldn't get hit either. That's where the door cracked open and the camel's nose came in. And my, yeah. That's my take on it. So then, and, I'm, and, and I mean this in sincerity, that the legislature, I believe unknowing, if you will, here comes this restructure of these statutes, um, or add them in and tweak some things and follow the uniform method of collection for people who want to do loans and whatnot through a local governmental entity. Mm -hmm. The words initially about pace and whatnot weren't talked about that I remember. It was just when you looked at a generic statute, you go, oh, well, um, Lake Sumter, Lake and Sumter did it with the ambulance service years ago where they did a corporation together. So the other legislation that's out there for two government entities to get together to carry out a common interest to the public okay. was another door that opened up. So whoever put this together was very bright. And that's a great tool for governments to use to save money and to get things done. So in comes PACE, and they use this, but they go in, and I'm sure had a lobbyist, and tweak some things in the statute. And that was the federal PACE program. That is still, this is still, I'm sure that that has had influencing factors because okay. we're talking the billions of dollar deal. Right. And so what they want to do is what looked to me is at the end is to have a tax-free bonds issued Okay. Like you would if you were a, a governmental entity, like a CDD or a county or a city. Okay, so then that got validated by a circuit court in Leon County. All that stuff was challenged, went through the Supreme Court, and to the letter of the law, it all was legal. Now, that's the dividing point. 
that I truly believe that it was all interpreted. I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a student of law, but they followed along what the Constitution said, the courts did. The question is, is it good governmental policy? That's the real question. Mm -hmm. And then that also brings into play who gets to make the decision. It's up to the local governmental entity, the county commission and or the municipalities. So at least it left a stopgap at a community level that those folks, which what you're involved in, to, do you want to do this? Um, yeah, let me just explain. We are looking at a, a commercial PACE project that is being proposed in the city of Lady Lake. And we're trying to iron out how it affects the taxpayers and his office um, because it goes on the tax bill. Um, and unlike if you just use a credit card or something, you have it, you get it on, based on credit. So that's the situation. And there's also a similar commercial project in, Mount, uh, in Leesburg that we know of. So we're trying to define and understand whether this is a good thing or a bad thing for the public. Yes, and, and, and normally I don't weigh in on, because of the ministerial duties, my job or objective to carry it out and to stay away from in, intervening in any other levying authorities' business, because I'm the law says and the Constitution is I'm supposed to stay, even from the appearance of that, stay away from it. But the taxpayers pay my salary, and they pay our salaries, and if there's something that looks egregious or harmful, then I feel there's a moral obligation to make a statement, um, this is what I know, my take on something. The commercial side of it is, I've not, I don't have as much comment on, because to me, that involves ed informed business folks making financial decisions that they're gonna pay the piper. The residential gets into very sticky things where you're not necessarily dealing with business savvy folks. Mm -hmm. um, if you're an RN, you're not going to school to learn how to be a business person. You're learning how to take care of somebody and document it and, and be a good side, bedside manner. Um, so, or you're a retired person that's not in the modern day versions of things that we're learning aren't all that pleasant sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, these folks, I believe, can be caught up in something that they really don't understand the total consequences if something were to fail and other things that happen. Now, I'm on residential, not on commercial. Right. An, an example, I'll give a few anecdotal things. One is that say you then, you get one of these PACE loans and you put solar panels on your house, or you put a new air conditioner in because it's more energy efficient, and, 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 Tom and I deduced it down to, the only, I think the only thing you can't replace is maybe your driveway with it. But That's I think- The whole you, list, I've looked at the list yeah. extraordinary. that the financiers provide, the guys that have the bonds. Because they storm hard. Yeah. You know, if you put new windows, it's storm hard. You put new roof on, storm hard. Plus, they also conserve energy, so you get a doubling on it. So it, it passes the legal test, okay? But then what happens, say, you go get 30 grand to do this, AC in your windows, which would, on a regular house, that'd be about right. Now that's on your tax bill, as you said, because they can use what's called the Uniform Method of Collection through 197, the chapter, that specifically says that a local government can have an assessment and choose to have it put on the tax bill and then contract with me as a partner to go collect it. And then that uniform method collection includes eventually going to Gary Cooney as the clerk of court to sell the property, your home. If, if they don't pay, pay. if they right. don't keep the payments right. up. Yeah, that's a very key fact. <laughs> um, so, so what happens is that and if these things break or something doesn't work like you thought, there is no go to the city, there is no go to the county, it's not their deal. And there is no go to the tax collector. I just have to march on and do it according to the uniform method collection, which is ultimately handed over to the just clerk of court to sell it. The same thing if uh, you had a regular mortgage and you stopped making payment on it, the mortgage holder would file the paperwork to get this process moving. Right. right. With so. with one exception, that is a judicial process. This is not. This is a sovereignty of the authority of the office to carry out the law. So okay. it's a straight line. It, it's so they don't really have to go to the judge or anything? No, not, not a tax deed So there's sale. no judgment applied where the judge can right. say, you're getting screwed, I'm not going to allow this. No, no, because okay. all, now remember, we're following the uniform method of collection. We're following every step of the law, and every step of the law is this person said, thank you, Tom, that they wanted to put um, this, this debt on their home, essentially, in the guise of an assessment, a governmental assessment. Because these entities become they've become a governmental entity mm -hmm. by, I think it was Flagler County partnered with the city of Kissimmee 
which is the parents of the child that became this Pace Agency of Florida, and then Pace Agency of Florida then private contracts out with multiple other entities, if I remember right, that right, that conduct the work of marketing, in my opinion, and running, you know, and they have a board and they decide all the origination fees. And it's got all the makings of a loan, and nothing else on the tax bill is like that. There may be a lot of things in the Everything tax else it's for like street lights or it's, something. That you yeah, whether we agree in one neighborhood we want street lights or not is not the issue here. The issue is it's legal. It's put on there for a governance purpose, not for a specific person um, for their one their set of windows or their. So it becomes the tax cutter winds up becoming the collector for private investors, yeah. and which makes it a near hundred percent risk-free endeavor and that's what one of the their proponents said is that that's why it's six percent instead of 12 or 18 percent because the risk is so low because the debt always follows the house it isn't can't be discharged with mm -hmm. a bankruptcy or anything else so as long as the house exists and it's got value they can be attached for that loan value it wouldn't I matter presume. if the house and all stuff was gone it could on that tax roll would be that way. On the land. Yeah. yeah. So what you also have, now remember, this is an assessment. So if you prorate that, or their payment plans, whatever you say, prorate that out, that debt stays on that piece of property. House gone, solar panels gone, all that. Mm -hmm. And tax and assessments supersede a mortgage. So in other words, it's, it's front of the line. So at the end of the day, you can wind up losing your home over putting solar panels on your house through this kind of loan. Because you might turn your ship over, you might go too far, and then they're gonna re-amortize if you have a loan, because it's gonna be on the tax bill, so your tax, your monthly payment's gonna go up. There just seems that, and I guess I don't believe in government solving every private problem. I just principally don't buy into that. And they'll, there's a lot of stories, of, well, this person can't afford this or that. Well, they sure can't afford the house to be taken from. Yeah. Um, now that, that's the residential. Can I ask, you sure. mentioned earlier about uh, when the senator was proposing the bill, that it was to keep that project like sun and pan, solar panels not be added to the valuation of the house. Does that also affect these? They're also? Yeah. So, right. so the, actually the, the valuation if you bought it with a credit card, it'd be on the house, right? Or is it the... They, it's a separate Well, no, because it would still be a permit pulled, and it would still, remember, the constitutional amendment provided where it gave Baker relief not, if you pull a permit, regardless how you paid for it, okay. these things so you want to get That's a separate issue. Separate issue. Okay. And that's exactly So this is just a finance issue and, you know, the, the risk to the buyer. Correct. But your point is spot on because that's exactly the issue. It is exactly it, and it, it happens, it gets on your tax bill. Um, think about that. It was proposed to give tax relief. Mm -hmm. Now, in the end, it winds up on your tax bill. That and doesn't and make sense. It's, to me, that's a flip. Because it's on the tax bill, it reduces the risk and the interest. So basically, we're subsidizing the contractor and the selling price by the reduced the risk and reduced interest. And so if it's a solar panel project that then goes bad, and there's a lot of evidence out there, I've got a separate white paper on that, about solar panel systems that fail, and all sorts of problems. And uh, But it, you just can say, do a search on solar panel lawsuits or PACE lawsuits, and you'll just find all sorts of them. And so let's get back to the commercial side, and because we kind of explained the, the, the residential side somewhat, but and, and that's what's caused part of this issue is they're both use the same name, PACE, and as a consequence, I'm trying to differentiate between what we consider to be a highly risky uh, program, PACE, for residential properties, but is it risky and is it uh, got value for commercial prop properties, like say a $20 million apartment complex? Uh, and so now go ahead and we'll try and stay on a commercial. So, well, in Leesburg, when it was introduced to the city commission of Leesburg, um, 
they're going down a road residential, then they chose to stop once they got some misinformation. Um, Mr. Baker alerted me, and we went over and shared some information. And then um, Roebuck the third, Dan Roebuck the yeah. third, was interested in it. So we met and met with him and some of the folks from these private companies that contract with this outfit. And it was the conversation was focused on residential. But what happened, and he made a, I thought, very honorable and wise approach because it already stepped up to saying they would do the residential, but they saw the danger for the residents and they backed off. But in the meantime, two commercial projects were already finding, or the financing was structured and it was underway. It was like assisted living facilities and things like this. And the city had already uh, approved kind of, them? Okay. They, appro they approved and then they started. They had to go to the city council and get them approved, kind of like a planning and zoning project. Yeah. So they backed away from the residential, in my opinion, to keep from the residents from falling into that trap. Yeah. And then said, they asked, they said, David, look, we want to go ahead and let the commercial ones go because these are, you know, informed people making the capital investments and they're business endeavor, they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And so I agreed with it because it was a reasonable thing to do than to pull the carpet out from other projects already underway because of someone getting educated. Yeah. And, and I also believe that from a commercial standpoint, uh, it's just to succinctly say it is, everybody involved in that knows what's going on. And, yeah, and more sophisticated buyers. Yeah, and, 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 and you're looking at something the whole project and what the endeavor is and how it's all structured everything is a whole different world than you get something in the mailbox or somebody emails you or somebody shows up and says, hey, I see your roof only looks like heck and it's going to blow off before yeah. you know it. And while we're changing the shingles, let's put new solar panels on there and change your windows out. And they got their approved contractors, you know. So I'm, how the whole thing is structured, and it's been since 07, since I've studied, so it's been a little rusty on some of it. But the general overall thing, it smells the high heaven on the residential side. The commercial side, I, I, I don't know enough to make any comment other than it seems glaringly different by its design. Other than the fact that you're using the tax collector to collect commercial paper. Books. I mean, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a private Wall Street well, endeavor, and then you got the tax collector involved in collecting their money. Don't you get a fee though for doing that? Yes, and then they try to, they, one of them tried to propose that they don't pay what the cities pay for their, oh, really? and, they, and there was also, um, they also had written in a law, if I'm not mistaken, that they're not subject to the 4% November discount. Uh, okay. Nice. Because so, they, so they proposed it though, but is that part of it? It's that? in there. I, got, I can't find it right now, but I read it. In, in what, the Leesburg? No, in the law, if the law changed. That's so specific. the law changed so that what, you don't get the discount? On, the, on that particular line item. Yeah, okay. And uh, so what is the downside from, are you at least breaking even on your costs if you have to do that? I would say yes, and of course there's a remedy um, financially in how the tax collector office runs, and that is anybody we collect fees or taxes, they stand at the table at the end of the year with unused revenues, because we don't use all of our revenues. We only use about 80 yeah. to 78%. So then they then you get in the pecking line, so there's a remainder aspect. So it balances out. Um, they pay, It pays its way. It's it's The structure is sound. Okay. And, and it's just, the issue really is the fact of using the strong arm of the law, basically, to make sure that the taxes get collected. It'd be like a I mean, it's probably not a good example, like a bookie getting a law change where the sheriff goes out and collects his debt. Well, my understanding <laughs> is that <laughs> so, <laughs> so he's a constitutional officer, and he's like, I'm not doing that. My, my understanding from uh, discussing this with people that are proponents of the lady like commercial project is that they're only getting uh, the PACE program to finance about the top 20%. The, the, the other words, they got other lenders for most of it. That's what Innsbruck's was structured. And so that means also that you've got these other lenders that most likely are looking at this and seeing whether it's risky because I think the PACE program, you, that would get paid off first, right? It mm has -hmm. uh, seniority over debt payment programs. Right, it's going to get collected one way yeah. or another. And so, so it would be, it's called a statutory priority lien because it falls under tax. So in other words, they're a government entity. They've formed themselves to be in the position as a government. 
Okay. So they have the sovereignty of that and the power delegated from the folks through the Constitution. Pretty so, powerful. So are there any other uh, commercial projects proposed in Lake County? Not to my knowledge. Okay. This, as you know, this surfaced a while back in, in Osceola Lake. It was brought around. They gave me a list of, that's in a lot of other counties and cities. Some or something. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, it, then then I go this way, Vance. I think from my my governance position, or however you want to say, I view how our republic should operate. Yeah. As that two sides. One is I don't think government should be doing all these things all the time. I just think it just grows a beast. It grows a bigger entity. And mm -hmm. the other part is that the other side is well, if that's what they want to do and it's their property, then personal responsibility. And that's their deal, and they deal with the consequences. But mm -hmm. I feel like when you're in a position to serve the public and you understand something, that you have inside information, if you will, that's good information, yeah. around, to not share it's, I think, um, not not providing uh, the transparency they deserve. Um, and it's funny because these entities, when they are at the table, um, they're not all that schooled. Sometimes they're very schooled on understanding that they have to play with the same rules that all governmental entities do, public records, sunshine law. Hmm. Once you stick your toe in government and get them tax dollar and that machine running, you're subject to these scrutinies, and as every government entity should be, and any office holder should so be. So when you say they're a government entity, who is they? They, PACE, okay, there's PACE, the there's fourth the Florida, agency, okay. and then there's, then you've got these spinoff pieces, um, that are other local government entities, and then each of those contract with that. Yeah. Thing. So then it seems like it's it's like a holding company almost, and that they've yeah. got they've got the ability for other funders to come in. Like I talked to one for this Lady Lake project, he's an independent financing entity, and they use Pace uh, to do the fund to participate in the lending of for a project right. and. But there are others out there, and uh, they're listed on the website, I think. So you, and you, they got neat little marketing names, like, I don't know. Free money. <laughs> Stuff, it just things Low that, cost, no cash. Yeah, it just doesn't have a, it doesn't say it's City of Leesburg, um, Park, you know what I mean, tax collector. It's, it's definitely. So, so for each city, they have to create one of these. Well, what happens is, each city, um, agree, what essentially happens, agrees to have an interlocal agreement with this oh, governmental okay. entity and then that interlocal agreement maps out you got no hand in this you got no responsibility but they're going to come beating on your doors what i think because you're their representatives you, you know yeah. city council or commission and once they get in there i presume then the words can spread that okay we've been we've got you know the city of leesburg uh doing this so now it's open sesame to make right. pitches to say developers to mm -hmm. uh, use our financing and i imagine that that financing can you say that they're based upon bonds and are they That's getting true. special i mean like what interest free or something like that well it's a tax issue because it's like a cdd you know okay. where if you go to cherry lake development uh, puts all their what they want in well those people that buy in there with knowledge by knowing they're getting these amenities and that that debt will be paid off by them. It's like vill villages, right? They got so, all the CDDs correct. in there, and it and it actually is owned by and the CDD is a government entity, it's yeah. fire department, it's it's a it has all they understand all their the rules of the game yeah. of how you have to do your audits, how you have to, everything like that. Well, when you visit with some of these folks, um, now I'm not there's some from very sharp very You're well like city people or. Well, right now I'm talking about the PACE affiliates, okay. you know, however you want to put that. Right. They're sharp folks, but as you know, no matter how educated or smart you are, if you don't understand government in Florida, mm -hmm. you're in for a new treat because it's a different world. They know finance, finance, but they don't know how to act as a government entity. entity. And I, I see some of the things when we were in, speaking with them, different replies. Um, and I won't say they're completely devoid of it. I don't want to make that accusation. But it's definitely operating a little more um, private-ish. Where would I find the, all these rules about how they're supposed to behave? Is well, it one of the entities, the CDDs, that would be built into that? It would be the general laws of Florida and our state constitution. For example, 
public records and sunshine is built in the state constitution. Florida is okay. the most open government in the world, literally. So when you say, hey, Tom, um, can you send me, you know, your, the email you sent David about blah, blah, blah. And if it exists, we have to give it to you. Yeah, I do that. Right. But just today I was asking that. And that's your constitutional right. And that's people in government in Florida need to understand that. And how you handle money, how you, so what you think may not be a, and that's another thing, people talk in terms of public records. They think, oh, that's not a public record. No, what you mean to say is there's an exemption to inspect it. Anything in the possession of the government in Florida is a public record. The question is whether you are legally allowed to inspect it. And then when you have private companies engaged with Florida governmental entities, they subject themselves to some degree to record scrutiny. So you can't say, oh, I'm getting in a deal with this government thing, and then I'm not going to act like a government thing. So, for instance, uh, the finance agency, what goes through one of these entities, and that I could submit a request to see the contracts for their, mm -hmm. for what? Yep. Any of their subcontractors, for instance? Ask them what I would say. Anything that's financed with the money, I would think. Well, um, if you wanted to ask something for us, and I wanted to understand a tax yeah. worker, I'd go get the GL1, what is that, Tom? The, the, the record retention yes. list of, it's, it, it's the Department of State knows all the different kinds of entities and what records would be typically in the commission of business. For example, if you looked under the GL1 or whatever, which is a publication put out by the Secretary of State, what you find is like, say, sheriff. And under sheriff, it's going to say all these very common records that all sheriffs in Florida have because of the laws and what they do. Then you have tax code, and you'd have those. You'd have property appraiser. You'd have supervisor of elections because we have our unique ministerial duties. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if you have the city of Tavares, they're going to have a different creature of records they have. Now, we all would have common ones like payroll, a budget, things like that, but then we all have our uniqueness according to the design of the people's business we're conducting. So this entity, as we talked about, is part of the people's business. It is now taken on, it's taken on a life of being a governmental entity. And when you are, and you're a local government in Florida, you're subject to the same rules as David Jordan, Gary Cooney, Sheriff Grinnell, the school board, the state, the whole anything, uh, independent fire district, Reedy Creek Improvement District, Disney World yeah. Fire Department, they're all subject to the same rules we are. So a lot of times um, when you get around some of these things, you can, you'll start seeing behaviors that are consistent with my private background. I understand how you operate like that. But then in the last 22 years, being in the governmental arena of local government, the whole new game. Yeah. You, know, you, you, work, you work in a glass house. So the, one of the trade-offs, and if they choose to go with a pace financing and get the lower interest rate, is that they have to be more transparent. They have to, they have to produce records in a, in a reasonable amount of time, and if they are not... Like they, payment they, records or... Unless they can say, unless you say, um, here's a specific statute that exempts the inspection, they have to tell you the specific one. And there's 1,048 exemptions in state statutes. Yeah. <laughs> because there's a dual responsibility. Yeah. For example, if somebody came in here and say you paid something with a credit card or you applied um, for your driver's license here and we have your social security, well, that's a public record. But people, what? No, no, no. It's not inspectable. And if somebody said, I want to see Vance's driver's license application you did online, I'd go, or Tom, who's the records liaison, would respond to you and say those records are not inspectable, and he'd give you the statute. Why? Oh. Because each entity has to have, each head has to appoint a specific person in their agency as an RMLO, a records management liaison officer. It's in the law. Uh, the uh, so they got the trade off of the uh, transparency of the records. Now, can you think in uh, getting back to the big question is okay, we, we've covered the background and all this working going on so that uh, a developer in a commercial project can get lower interest on part of his funding sources, and but it's put on the property records, and then if they 
the project goes bad and they go bankrupt or where you have to foreclose, somebody has to foreclose, you end up processing that but you would earn enough from fees that yeah. you get that, that, that part the of the taxpayer isn't losing any money on it. No, that is, that's cured because that'd go to a, there's a couple things. As you know, the, there'll be a, two, a minimum of a two year period of what's called a certificate sale. And then the investors pay the taxes in full. Well, somebody would come along and buy the credit for 80% of value right. or something. And if they didn't, then, then they're gonna pull the trigger on the tax deed application. We'd start doing our ownership and conference reports and all this other stuff and then um, due process and then I sign a DR 513 and it goes over to Gary Cooney and then his people pick it up separation of power government mm -hmm. property rights are protected in Florida it's a good thing and then they start over essentially and do an even deeper dive into trying to make sure no one has an interest in this asset because you could have other um, what if somebody them. dies in Tennessee and, and they marches on, man. And the owner, and they will try and find it before, say, the like I'm saying, the owner, the mobile home park can take over the because he doesn't tell uh, the relatives, doesn't do any search. But you're saying that Cooney's office would. There, there's additional they, they, they do additional, additional they, they notices, and then they'll um, uh, ex they'll send an. Uh, request to the sheriff's department and they'll actually go out and post the property. I mean, it gets pretty, yeah. it, it's, Florida actually was cited in the Virgin Islands when they were, they didn't collect property taxes for three years because the federal co courts told them they didn't have a proper system mm -hmm. that comported with the U.S. Constitution of mm -hmm. property rights. And then they pointed to Florida and said, there's an example how you ought to build one. So they went at it and didn't, and then the courts held the state legislature in contempt. And then they finally wrote it right, and it mirrors very similar to Florida's now. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Because of that process, it's pretty long. It's a minimum of probably, say, three years, two and a half, before actually sell over. That would be a, a, a quicker one. Because a certificate holder can opt not to, and then the, um, what do you call it, the, the word alludes me to something one. Statute of limitations runs out in seven years. That doesn't happen. Like you said, yeah. if there's an interest in the value of the property, someone's going to get their hands on it. Yeah, and like the owner, the, the developer is telling me, he's putting in something like 40%. So if yeah, he fails, he's, he's losing that right off yeah, the he's, top. And, and, and that's commercial and not homestead. So yeah. what we put, the clerk would start to sell out, would be taxes and assessments and fees through our process to recover for taxpayers. Mm -hmm. And that's it. So, the, so something like... Uh, huge apartment complex that might be worth, I uh, take a stab, whatever things worth. I have no clue right now. 15 about million. That. Just say, say, that's a good number. We, and then, so we go along in the taxes and the fees and the penalties and everything. So happen to be by the time we get around to it and they say, it's going on the block for $300,000. <laughs> You're going to get some bidding. Yeah. Right? So, and, it, and then what happens, it goes past that number, then the clerk just writes the check to the last property owner. Yeah. Okay. So. The, so it sounds like and then the pace the, and then un, unlike those then the pace debt stinks for the next guy that just walked that place. Oh, okay. So he, he inherits he right. inherits that debt. Yeah. So it stays. Will, will he know it though? Um, if, or is he dumb and doesn't know that? I mean, I've seen both scenarios where people <laughs> don't do their due diligence, and it's real simple online to look up and see if there's. Yeah. anything encumbering or any judgments or liens or you know did somebody not pay for their roof get re-shingled that person gets in line so mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's another part of the sale process you can file an affidavit and that's another reason we alert all these folks that have interest so that they aren't left in you know out in the cold so you know somebody didn't pay for their septic tank you know, they didn't pay the guy he files a judgment puts it over there, and then when the house goes through that process, if there's any proceeds left over before it goes to the taxpayer, these other people that are owed rightfully money get made whole. Mm -hmm. so, okay. so are we at the point where it doesn't sound like there's any major downside to the taxpayer for commercial pace programs, and that, but you're just starting to get experience with them in something, do you, is there any kind of a, a national or statewide mechanism that you people share? I mean, uh, the tax collectors share that would warn them if, say, Bradenton County 
has something go bad and all of a sudden they find there's some new legal defense that shorts them of well in the sense of the collection world for yeah. being a collector in florida the florida tax Collectors association and we communicate pretty effectively and and it's the, anything that pops up anywhere in the state because we all operate under the general laws of florida that are mm -hmm. essentially identical it could be different policies or procedures by the head just deciding they're going to build a building here versus there um, yeah. or i'm not going to do this online or I, am. I mean stuff like that but the but this stuff we're talking about they're spot on as a matter of fact the software company um, taxes system is all designed right along with the statutes and i think 65 percent of the wall runs through those softwares in their, in their so we have, we're kind of like if someone if someone gets on the web, you know, they will alert the rest of the spiders. Mm -hmm. Meaning, yeah. the connectivity of he all gets of us. Sort of alert. Of, yeah, They'll, like when we had a public record request for um, all the email addresses that we had of people, because you can choose to do things electronically with us. Right. Well, the legislature and the wisdom decided to block that because people would be less likely to do that kind of work that way, which is cheaper government. And so the association, it was a unique request that we hadn't faced. So they, through their legal counsel, went and got with the right folks and come back and said no, and then communicated with that entity and they went, we agree with you legally, and they went away. So there's things like that where we work together to- Superintendent of Elections, I know, did that in the last year because same thing, people were starting to request the emails that he was collecting uh, and uh, they blocked it. I know I tried. <laughs> yeah. It'd be very handy information, but then it would really undermine trying to get people out of a brick and mortar to so because there's no endless pot of money. Yeah. Just like for example, our world, we're we do what eight hundred appointments in a day. We do probably two thousand registrations on a slow day renewal in the mail run. And it just on and on and on it goes. And so in the driver's license, we've had fifty thousand appointments since we implemented that in late August. Mm -hmm. Just and that's also tagging I mean title work as well. Mm -hmm. When you get that voluminous, it grows with population and Lake County's not gonna get smaller and there ain't no endless pot of money. So back to my point of the email stuff is the more things you can encourage people to do something uh, yes ma'am is it am I already run out? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, so we're running out. I thought we had 12 hours. <laughs> Jeez. So, so um, where I was going with that is... said officials never warned you about this stuff. Well, you didn't. I thought you I said... I didn't that. ask. Yeah, I don't. Okay. But anyhow, so um, what happens if they don't protect that, then it's just everybody's going to run out of the nest, and then they'll be standing out of the office, brick and mortar and people. It just costs more money to do it. So that's, that's the name of the game if you're really concern about taxpayers' bonds. This thing with the commercial side, though, I don't see any harm to other taxpayers. Okay. I don't. I just so it'd be fair if, it's, if I was to share with the cities that I know that, okay, that commercial side, there probably isn't any downside to it. I can. Uh, but uh, we'll get back with them on the residential issues. Yeah. The residential, um, if I had a family member, my mother asked me, she lives on Southland and mm -hmm. has a two bedroom, one bath house, and she's a retired postal worker, and she said, hey, they did it, I'd be like, don't do it. Yeah. yeah. That's what I tell my mom, so I love her. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so we've got, the, we, we've got the inside story on commercial pace. It looks like that isn't a risky area for the taxpayer, uh, and or maybe not for the cities or the developers. Uh, it's up to them and we assume they're sophisticated enough to research what the risks are to them and uh, with that we'll call it a wrap and we'll come back later to talk about uh, the ri risky residential pace financing programs. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it.